Hi, my name is Andy Krav Krav Kravitz, and I am a reporter from the Peoria Jur Journal Star. We are here to talk about proposals to change the bond and the bail for the um, for for the uh, state. I have three folks here, and I would like them, starting with um, you, to 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 tell me who um you are. Uh, my name is Shama St. Louis, and uh, for this purpose, I am the um, founder of the Black Justice Project. Hey, Andy. Thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Peter Kobach, um, and I'm a Peoria resident and human rights activist. Hello. Good afternoon. My name is Ryan Hidden, and I'm the executive director of Change Peoria. All right. So there are um, plans now to uh, to change the way bond and bail is is done in the state. A a as of right now, the way it is done is if you happen to be charged with a crime, and if the state, meaning the prose the prosecutor's office, deems you someone who should be held you have up to 48 hour, hour, hours to go in front of a judge once once you do that a judge will then set a an an amount of mud mud money which is known as the bond that you that you would be li li liable for if you do not show up you do not have to post all of that you only have to post 10 Ten percent of it. So, if the judge sets a bond of ten of ten and ten thou, you would only have to come up with um, one. But that has, but that would then have to be cash. You could not put up your house, a car, or stock for for in for for instance. There are many here in this state who feel that that is not a very good way of do 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 doing things here are three of uh, of them and i would like to hear from one of you on what just your um your on your um thoughts who wants to go first shaman, you go? shaman go <laughs> well or peter yeah sure so um you explained the system pretty well, Andy. The The fact is that in Illinois, we have over 250,000 people every year that are held before their trial. So we have a criminal justice system that presumes innocence, yet a quarter of a million people across the state are held before their trial in a jail, um, before their innocence or guilt is decided. And a majority of those are held because they can't afford to pay their money bond. Um, so. We have a system where, based on how much money you have, uh, based on your wealth, decides whether you uh, get to go free before your trial, continue working, continue caring for your children, maybe continue going to school, or if you're poor, well, tough luck, you'll be sitting in jail until your trial. And that might be months of time. So folks across the whole state are losing their jobs, they're losing custody of their children, they're losing housing because they can't pay rent, all before a judge has decided or a jury has decided whether they're, they're, they're guilty of the crime that they've been accused of. One, um, one very quick quick thing. For the people now who are watch, watching, first off, feel I'm free to um, share, to share this. Second of all, if you have anything that you would like to ask to ask them, please, please um, type type in your um, message, and we happen to have a a screen here that we can that that we can see. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. Um, what would you say? I mean, P Peter just laid out the basic under the underlying thing, and yes, most of the people that are held in county county county, county jails are being held on pre-trial, but that is also because once you have been sentenced and if you're charged and if you, and if your sentence is more than one year you go off to prison prison so by definition most people not all but most if if they are served serving time of a year or more are in are in the um jail jail what do you say to folks that would say we have to have some way to make sure that people show up well, I think you're right. So the 70, 70, 80% of the people that are sitting in jail are sitting in jail before they've been sentenced. 
The other 20 to 30 percent uh, are people who have been sentenced for a year or less. Uh, so those are the people that are currently sitting there. I would think the other thing we have to consider is how much are we, is it costing us to house them and feed them while they're there? Um, I think to your question of um, what to do about people who are uh, sitting there on cash bail. Um, yeah, I guess I forgot your question. <laughs> what okay. Your question again? What, I, what I was going to ask, what I was going to ask you is, is that <laughs> what do you think that we? There are people out there who say that, um, who say that what you're saying is is that most of the folks there are being held that are on pre um, pre um, pre a trial. Oh, sorry. If, do, the how, point, if the yeah, point yeah. of bond yeah, and yeah. bail is to make sure the P people show up. Yeah, so that and I think that's a good point to fit, to to uh, make as well is that mo some may think that the purpose of bail is to protect uh, society or protect themselves and keep those who are dangerous in jail. Uh, that's not the point. The point is to get give them incentive to show up for their trial, to show up for their next court date. Uh, what has proven far more effective than making them pay, uh, pay a, a money bond or cash bail is systems that are just simply reminders. Don't forget you have a court date next week. Don't forget you have a court date tomorrow. Do you have a ride? Uh, is there any reason why you can't come? How can we overcome those issues? Um, rather than forcing people to pay a bond that they may or may not be able to pay, um, and then sitting in jail uh, and f suffering all the negative consequences of that. Um, I think the other thing to um, keep in mind with the with the cash bail um, is that often people don't get that money back, uh, so that often will get eaten up with court costs. So it's not like you put your five hundred or thousand dollars down and you, and you simply just automatically get that back. Well, if I can just em emphasize one thing Ryan said mm -hmm. um, is that the purpose of bond. Uh, as, as declared by the courts is to make sure that you show up to your trial. There's no evidence that shows that that is true, mm. that, that people are more likely or less likely to show up if they've paid their bail or if they've posted bail um, to show up in court. So what Ryan was pointing out was that there are other ways that have been proven to, to, to ensure people come back for their trial. And that's reminders. That's uh, either text, email, call, or making public transportation more available to folks. So the purpose that bonding was set up for has failed. And so the question is, what are we going to do to ensure that people do show up for their trial? And there are options for that. Shama. Um We have talked long and hard about um, why this is bad. What do you think that we should do? Well, instead of assigning a do dollar, he has mentioned rides, he has mentioned calls and all that stuff. But what else? What else can be done to make this a more fair thing? Because in theory, it is fair. In theory... Under the Bail Reform Act, which was passed two um, years back, all folks have a pretrial serv serv services re 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 report, which talk about their fine finances. And in theory, ba bond slash bail is um, set up based upon the amount of money that you have. There are rules against an excessive bond. So... You guys are saying that this has has it worked? Okay, why is it not working? And what should what more can we do to make it fair? We've touched on some some mm -hmm. of it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. I mean, I think if if we have a system that is supposed to um, ensure that it's fair and that the bonds are not set too high, then we wouldn't we wouldn't there would be no need for this coalition right so we wouldn't have um, the data to show that because people have been placed in jail and not uh, able to afford their bonds that they have lost their housing or their jobs or it's put them in deeper poverty mm -hmm. so whatever system is currently in place to um, gauge whether or not a person can afford bail is not working very well so you know our suggestion as a coalition is to eliminate it 
all together. Eliminate it all together. Now, if when you say that, are you saying for all for all offenses, there would not be a cash bail bond system for all offenses? And again, I don't want to say you could always pick the highest crime, the least crimes, but unfortunately, and that's not and that's and that's not fair because most people mm -hmm. fall in, in in the middle. Are you bait? But it's got to be asked. Are well, you saying that murder would then not have a bond? Someone could go free? No, what I'm saying is that we have people in positions that we have elected mm -hmm. to make decisions on our behalf. Um, if a judge deems a person to be um, a threat to themselves or to someone else, that person would not get a bond. So uh, that person would be in jail until their trial. Okay. Um, so it's no, I'm not saying that, you know, someone who killed somebody should just be able to walk the streets. I'm saying that we have systems in place and people in place who we the people have elected to make those decisions for us. And if a time comes where we feel as if they're not making the right decisions, then as you know, residents, we have the power to to change the people in those positions or to um, push for reform. Okay, so um, another, another quest, question we have, and this could be from any of um, of you guys. Uh, we we have heard the um, the a more fair, and I think the whole point of what we're trying to do is to get to a more just, a more fair thing where just because of where of where you live or what you or what you look like should not be it should not you know be a factor judge justice is blind um in theory theory um but what under what she just said aren't we potentially giving more power to a judge by saying you're in or you're out and I understand that you could maybe have a set list of things, but under the bond system right now, if your bond is 20, 20 I'm thousand, 10 per 10 percent, you got to come up with two. And if you come up with a one and you go back to a judge and ask for a bond re re review, it might get dropped. It might not, but at least you're having that second bite at the apple under and i don't know all the details but under the way that you made it sound the judge just says you are in or you are out and that's it you don't get to argue your case you don't get to try to come up with the money you don't get to have the whatever so is that more un unjust than than just and any one of you guys can answer that i, I, I think even in the scenario that you out you uh, outlined there that if somebody's determined to be unsafe either to themselves or to mm -hmm. somebody else in that situation the judge says no we can't really release you at this point there there is uh, or, or there should be a process uh, still that allows them to appeal that decision so it can go to a you know a higher judge or a higher court to say to also make a determination maybe dig a little deeper into that situation to see if that person can be released safely or not really safely so it's not just an ultimatum. We're not uh, putting judges as dictators mm -hmm. and having the final say. I think our entire uh, system is based on checks and balances. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that system doesn't go away just with the, with the but, elimination of cash bail. But don't we sort of have that now with the pre with the pre with the pre tri trial ser services re 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 report? And for the, for those out there who do not know what I'm talking about, under under the base reform act of two um, years back there is supposed to be a report that is that is made for most folks not not all but for most that will state who who you are what your path record is where where you work how much money you make um, in some in some cases, it talks about men, mental health. It may talk about your kids. It may talk about how much money you bring home. The idea is to give the judge a complete I image of who you are. So, don't we sort of have don't we sort of have have that now, Shama? And and if and if not, why? Well, I think one of the things that we're missing here is if what we're saying is if 
a judge is to the point where he's making the decision to send a person home, then that person could probably go home without without the the bail, the cash bail, right? So if if it if he's to the point where he is made or he or she is making that decision, like okay, you know, I'm I'm weighing all the checks and balances to see if this person can get a bail so that they could have the potential to be released back out into the public. Why do we need the bail? Right? Like what like I think we have to get to the foundation or like the underlining reason as to exactly why we have the bail. Peter talked about um, us having the bail to ensure that people show up for court. Well, that's already been proven that it's not really effective. So really, what's the real reason that we have the bail? Well, bail is actually, um, at, and I'm just saying this, not not because I happen to hold a, a lead legal um legal license, but rather I've co covered courts for tw 20 years. And oftentimes you will hear the a judge say that the need for bail is to make sure that pe pe people show up, but also to pro to protect the pub the public. They cannot set an excessive bail, one where it's so much money that there's no po possible way you could ever get out. They are not allowed to um, do that. And if I can just say one thing yeah, about please. that. If it's really to protect the public mm -hmm. and the bail has to be set at an amount in which they think that person should be able to afford it, mm -hmm. then how is that really protecting the public? Because if you're setting my bail at an amount to where, based off of my finances, I should be able to afford it to get out anyway, it's not really to protect the public. Well, it's, it is it is a a weighing factor for 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 instance, murder in in this town. The bail, I'm sorry, the bond tends to be between one and two mil, and that was, and some someone might say I can't afford a thing, but given the uh, nature of of the crime, of the need to to protect the pub the public and your finances it balance balances out to that given, so it would be like a plus b and c type of a thing given the nature uh -huh. of the, given the nature of the crime and um wanting to protect the public if someone committed murder and you give them a one million dollar bond, bond what is the difference between giving them that one million dollar bond that you know that they cannot afford because they are a danger to the public uh, versus just not giving them a bond. You have a very, very good like, point. And, and I think the, the, the more troubling thing to me is, so does that mean that if you're rich, uh, if you have the means, then you don't, you're not as punished by the courts because you can afford what to, to post that bail. I think what's really pernicious about money bond is that it exacerbates inequities in our society. Mm -hmm the black-white wealth gap means that uh, a, a white person accused of a crime and a black person accused of a crime, uh, the white person is more likely to have the means to post bail than the black person. And when our criminal justice system is based on who can afford to be free and who, can afford, who can't afford to be free, then people of color fare much worse and people of low income fare much worse for no reasons that they can control, but because of institutional racism and the history of this country. So uh, I think it's it's troubling to say, well, this system means that, uh, you know, if you have the money, you can buy yourself out, and if you can't, you're punished. And, and just to throw in that cash bail, the, the protected in public should not be a factor. Um, and if, as you propose, that the way the system is placed now is that the the affordability of the bail is taken into consideration. Uh, I would just argue that that's not happening. That's not working. Otherwise, we wouldn't have so many people sitting in jail now waiting for their trial. If there was truly set at what they can afford, we'd have zero people sitting in jail right now waiting for the trial. No, yet, I, I did. 70 I, to 80% of the people at the Peoria County Jail are sitting there because they don't have enough money in their pocket. No, I said th what I. First of all, you are you are right. What I was trying to say is that they have to set a bond that 
not necessarily on what you say you could post, but that is fair given the fact of what you are saying you can afford and the type of crime. Is that um, typical loan level fel felonies right now are between 10 and 20 thou, which is a bail of one to um, one to um two thou. Most misdemeanors are are one are one hundred bucks about give or give or give or take. I think we probably should evaluate the word fair. Okay. Right? Because even though they're even though they're uh, approaching it and they they think that they're doing it from a holistic standpoint as far as knowing all of the person's expenses and doing um, kind of like all of that background, getting all of that background information, it's clearly not fair, right? So there there has to be something where there's a, a, a either a miscommunication or a lapse or someone's not playing by the rules properly something's happening because it's clearly not fair otherwise we would not have what was the number 250,000 people in the state of illinois stuck in jail because they cannot afford bail right so there is something wrong with the system that we can talk about all day long you know oh well all of these checks and balances are in place to make sure that you can afford it but it's not working so we have to start thinking about, okay, if this is not working, what is the other solution in order for these people to not be separated from their families, to not go deeper into poverty? Or to maybe, in the, in the case of when, when women lose, 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 um, lose um, kids. And exactly. that's the last so, thing that we want to see. Um, so that leads into a great, that's a great little thing. That was Segway. great. Yeah, thanks. I forgot <laughs> the uh, name of the word. Sharma, Sharma, please. Um, the point being is, <laughs> so you said, what can what can we do about it? There are two bills now working their way through the through the house. Could one of you three tell tell me about them? Yeah, I'm happy to. <laughs> So yeah, one is actually sponsored by uh, a Peoria state representative, Representative Jahan Gordon Booth. And let me just get the bill number right. That's House Bill 2689, which is the Pretrial Data Act. So one of the things that's really concerning is that we don't have uh, a lot of up-to-date real-time data on bond outcomes across the state. So we sort of know some broad strokes, but it's hard to find data from county to county about how bonds are being um, set and the outcomes of those trials. So this act, uh, sponsored by Representative Gordon Booth, uh, would make sure that we have a better picture of what's going on. Um, it doesn't change how bond is administered, um, but it paints a better picture so that we know what the outcomes are. Um, there's another uh, uh, bill in the assembly right now, and that's the Equal Justice for All Act. That's House Bill 3347, and that would abolish money bond. So these are the these are the two bills that are uh, are in the assembly right now, um, and. There's actually a third way that reform is happening. Um, there's a Supreme Court commission that was established. Uh, the Supreme Court realized that, the Supreme Court of Illinois realized that there was a broken system and they've convened a commission to hear from uh, legal experts, but also from people who have experienced um, bond across the state to hear how can we fix this. So another way that reform could happen would be the Supreme Court could issue a rule change which would impact how uh, courts across the state set bond, whether they do set bond or, or whether they are enforced to set a bond that is affordable for the person who's been accused of a crime. So there's there's three things happening right now. We're not alone. This, uh, across the state, uh, folks are realizing that the criminal justice system is broken, not just nationally, in their county courthouses and across the state. So uh, we're really just talking about you know what, what's going on in Peoria, and I, I think Shama will maybe have an opportunity to talk about what we've been doing locally here. I would but, love that. But we're we're part of a larger coalition statewide um, because it's not just Peorians, but it's Illinoisans who have realized that the system is broken and needs to be fixed. Shama, go. Yeah, and I, I want to point out too that um, the coalition we started here in Peoria is also inclusive of the AC 
ACLU and the NAACP. So um, they're not represented here with us today, but they are a part of this coalition. And thanks for um, mm -hmm. po pointing that out. So, so what are some of the local <laughs> efforts? Because I know Brian and Brian and, and Bell, who is the sheriff, has long said that he kind of wants to empty the jail, not to the point where pe people who should be, be there mm -hmm. aren't, but he's often talked about men mental health issues, mm -hmm. he's talked about drug, um, drug, um, drug use. So what has he said about cash, about cash bail or cash bond? Um, I am not sure what Sheriff Asbell has said um, about, I have not talked to him specifically about it, um, but he, he did play a role in when we bailed out Mothers for Mother's Day, uh, providing me with Could, a list. Um, you please talk about that. What, yes, what do you mean so, bailed out Mother's Yes, so for uh, Father's Day this year, we are doing a bail out where we are uh, going to bail out hopefully four dads um, and uh, people of color and reunite them with their families for the holiday. So right now, um, it's it's kind of a way for the community to get involved if they're not like actively um, able to participate in the coalition that we have and kind of the legislative end of things. It's a way for them to participate and give back in some way. So and how that they can support they, the how, efforts. So how can they find out, like let's say, I, let's say that I happen to hear about this and I want to, give money how can mm -hmm. how can we do that so folks can contact us through the black justice project facebook page or the change peoria okay. um, facebook page we're also all on facebook too so okay um, they can reach out to us but if they want to reach out to us that way then we can let them know the means okay. in which they can donate okay so then um what uh, so did any of those women that you bailed out have they wound up back in 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 jail? As far as you know, because as far one as of we know, thing, no. Okay, because one of the things that the um, state said when I happened to speak to them is that a lot of people they might bond out and then they re they will reoffend or do or do something to wind the back up and then the bail gets higher, the bond gets easier, and it just becomes the cycle that builds on itself. I think that speaks to, you know, what we should be doing as local government and, you know, statewide government and as individuals to make sure that when folks are coming out of jail, we have the proper systems in place and we have the proper resources and things, you know, that they need to ensure that they don't go back down the same the same path. I don't think, you know, as a as a county we have enough. I think there's definitely more work being done than I've seen in the past towards um, recidivism, but I don't think that we have enough. Ryan, Ryan? Yeah, so if it's first reoffending, I think it goes back to a larger structural problem that we have in society and that there's little to no safety net left. Mm -hmm. um, especially with Illinois going through its recent budget crisis, a lot of cuts were made to nonprofits that might have otherwise helped people in the situation. Um, and there's just a gap in the system anyway where we, when we rely on nonprofits to uh, pick up the slack, there's always going to be gaps and people falling through them. Um, I, I think of something I wasn't mentioned earlier. Um, some of the things that are, are negative to people who are sitting in jail waiting for a trial, you know, not only are they separated from the families, they might lose their uh, job or other source of income, which could lead them, lead them to losing their apartment or losing a car or other opportunities, but often to avoid losing their job and all the negative consequences, that they'll take a deal that they wouldn't otherwise take. So they might plead guilty to something that they didn't do uh, or take a worse sentence uh, mm -hmm. that they otherwise would have taken or gotten if they went to, went to trial um, just to get out of jail, just to get out to avoid sitting in jail uh, for any longer than they have to. And we know that there's such negative consequences to people who have been convicted of a crime, uh, fel uh, felonies for sure, but also misdemeanors, uh, where you're denied access to housing, you're denied access to work, you're denied, denied access to government programs like education. Uh, so this, the ramifications for pretrial detention are far and wide. Um, and it's just a, it, it's really a fairness issue, but it's also uh, just who do we want to be as a society? Do we want people who have money in their pocket to be able to buy their way out of jail and those who don't to suffer the consequences? And if the fairness argument doesn't go for you, 
maybe the fiscal argument will. And those other people are sitting in, in jail waiting for trial are being housed and being fed and being provided other services, medical, mental health, uh, that the taxpayers are paying for. So I think, you know, we're trying to, as a coalition, we're trying to make the public safe. Uh, we're trying to, make, trying to make our community safer and save the taxpayers some money at the same time while doing it. Yeah, and if I could uh, jump in and say this this isn't without precedent. So in Cook County, where Chicago is, they've actually, uh, the, the chief judge, Timothy Evans, there has enacted stricter rules about um, setting money bond. And since he put in that reform two years ago in Cook County, um, the jail population has shrunk by 16%, saving Cook County taxpayers millions of dollars. Um, at the same time, violent crime fell in Chicago. Uh, and the, the impact on uh, the bonds that were set was that before that, about 25% of people uh, were let go on their own recognizance, which means that they weren't. there was no money bond that was set. That doubled. It went from about 26 to about 50% of people. Uh, were, were let go of their own re recognizance and um, a little f bit more also were kept in jail uh, because they were deemed to be a threat to themselves or to society. So we saw in Cook County where actually judges were able to make those decisions about who's safe for the community and uh, fewer people had to pay to have their freedom and a, f a few more people were, were kept uh, behind bars. But it saved taxpayer dollars, um, and uh, violent crime actually fell in Chicago over this same period. So it's, it's not without precedent. We can look to places like Cook County that are already pushing ahead on these reforms faster than the rest of the state. Um, one of the things, though, that people who are from um, here might say is Cook is its, is its own um, world up there. I mean, the I issue that they have here are not oftentimes the issues that we have here. Our jail pop, our jail has seen less and less. I mean, it's been under under capac ca ca capacity for a number of um, years. Um, our sheriff has long work trying to now. Granted, again, he's focused on drugs and men mental health and not cash bond. Um, where do these um, bills stand right now? I mean, I, I don't think they can. I don't think it can get done this um, year because they think they're finished and they've got the veto in the fall. Is that what you guys are hope, hoping for? Is to get this done in the veto or? Well, I want to mention how people can get involved. So I'll actually, this the, and and I'll connect. Let's get a, end with that but okay. you can, but i mean you I, can go I was now try to connect it back. Right, so, go, go for it so this thursday uh we're organizing an educational event around money bond where if you didn't you know get your fill of information during this interview uh we'll be hosting folks from across the state who are coming to peoria and talking about reform efforts what stage they are in the legislative process and also opportunities for peorians to travel to springfield to testify to their legislators and to the supreme court to say this is an issue that's important to us so that's this Thursday, June 13th, from 5.30 to 7 at the Lincoln Branch uh, Peoria Public Library. Um, uh, it's a free event, uh, and we'll have speakers. We'll have some information. You'll also be able to donate to help bail out fathers for Father's Day uh, and get involved. So, uh, you know, we talk about reaching out to state representatives, calling them, um, letting them know that's really important. But you can show up on Thursday, learn everything, and even make it to Springfield to, to tell your legislators in person what you think. Um, okay. Um I was I was gonna end I was gonna end with that, <laughs> but <laughs> that's okay. You threw me all off now. I'm like all out out of out of sorts. Um, well, so what I'd like to do is um, I could we're starting to get a bit long. I would like each one of um, of, of uh, you to give me one or two minutes. Some sum it um, up. I'm gonna start with with with, with uh, you, and I'm gonna work our way down. So I guess I'll just finish by saying that uh, the amount of money one have one has should not determine their freedom. Um, there's a better way to make sure that people show up for court. Um, eliminating cash uh, bail or money bond um, will make the our community safer uh, and and free up some money. It'll save us some money that we can use for other things. 
we have a lot of needs in Peoria and Peoria County in the state, um, and that money could be better spent elsewhere. Uh, I guess what I would say is to tie it into the to the national movement of criminal justice reform that's based upon the knowledge that our criminal justice system uh, unfairly treats people of color, people of low income, and really all folks. And one of the big uh, central elements of this is money bond because it it sort of exacerbates the differences that we have in society. The, the difference in outcomes and equity between people of color and people of low income and others in society. So if you care about criminal justice reform and if you care about racial equity uh, and poverty alleviation, this is a huge way to make an impact, not only in Peoria, which desperately needs this, but the rest of the state to make sure that Illinois is on better footing and that, we have, that we're saving money, but we're also creating safer communities. And I think as a community, as a society, um, we have to do everything that we can to keep families together. And so for me, uh, this is important to me because I feel like this is one of the pieces um, to a, a much larger picture of how do we put families back together, specifically black families back together. Well, guys, I, 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 I adjust. I, I, I would like to say thanks to all, to all, to all three, to all three of you. I just want to let the folks out there know I, I had asked them late last, late last last week they had very very short short no note, notice and they were and they stepped up and spoke and thanks very very much um like like um peter said there is there is a, a forum on third on third third day night um, please, please um, go if this is some something you would like to hear more, more of. The paper shall have a few uh, stories this this um, week, so of course you could always read the the uh, the uh, paper. And that is it. I just want to say thanks very, very much.